Happy Lunar New Year if you're Chinese, Happy Valentine's Day if you've got a heart, and uh, Happy President's Day if you're from the US. So let's take a look at what's happening to the markets. It's been a really long weekend, and I get really bored over long weekends because I can't wait for the market to open again, but the market's not going to open for another day. So I'm just taking a look at the charts, and um, let's explore what's happening to the market. So, uh, so far, for the first two months of the year, we have been bullish. We are up about... 5% on the S&P 500. My investment portfolio is up about 14%, 11 to 14%. I've got two portfolios and my trading portfolio is up about, yeah, about 15, 20% as well. Uh, so we have been bullish uh, from the start of the year. We started right over here on the 4th of January. And right now we are here. I'm looking at the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY. And you can see that uh, we had a bit of a, a nice correction over there, very healthy correction that found support at the 50 moving average. We bounce off that support and right now it seems that we are reaching another all-time high. Okay, and uh, market again looks a bit overextended right now. So I am anticipating another pullback pretty soon. Uh, again, remember that prices don't go up in a straight line in a bull market. They go through wave patterns, right? Wave up and wave down, okay? So it's like breathing out, breathing in. You can't breathe out forever. You run off air. You have to breathe in to breathe out again. So right now, where are we in this pattern? Again, we are breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So right now, we're in the breathing out pattern. And again, right now, we are a bit extended from the moving averages so we do anticipate obviously another breathing in now it's always impossible to predict the exact top no one can predict the exact top of when it's going to start breathing in all we can do is guess we just can only guess right and we we base on probabilities to guess and we put on trades so again remember when you put on the trade it doesn't always win but you don't have to win all the time. You just have to win more than you lose. And when you win, you win more. And you lose, you lose less. And that's how you make a profit at the end of the month, at the end of the year. By making more when you're right, losing less when you're wrong, and being right more than you're wrong. And not being right all the time because no one can be right all the time. And that's why risk management is really important. So how do we kind of like guess that the market's, you know, near the top is going to retrace? How do we guess, right? So there are a few ways which I guess. And one way which I guess is, again, looking at the Bollinger Bands, right? So the moment the price gets, uh, touches or goes out of the Bollinger Bands, it tells you it's like kind of like overextended, like a rubber band, right? So when you stretch a rubber band a bit too far, it will snap back, all right? So you can see, for example, over here, uh, previously, um, the moment it gets out of the upper Bollinger Bands, what happens? It snaps back, right? touches the upper Bollinger Bands, it snaps back. Now again, does it always snap back a lot? No, sometimes you may have just a small snapping back, like over here, of the Bollinger Bands snap only a bit back, right? It started going up again, and then we had over here, right? And it just went down a bit, and so on and so forth. So when it gets overbought and it retraces, you can't predict whether it's gonna be a big retracement, you know, or a very shallow one. You, you can't predict that, right? Um, now, besides the upper Bollinger Bands, we can also use the stochastics. So the stochastics are kind of like, again, a pendulum, right? So the moment it gets above 80, it tells you it's overstretched, it's going to snap back. So I have to look at both the upper Bollinger Bands and the stochastics to tell me when it's a bit overstretched, when it's likely to snap back. And for example, again, if you look back at a couple of months ago, uh, you can see uh, when it went above the upper Bollinger Bands, the stochastics were also above 80. So we've got it both extended on both indicators, so that's more reliable. And then we had a sell-off over there. And again, touching the upper Bollinger Bands, over 80, again, selling off. And again, it's not 100%, right? It doesn't happen all the time. Like, like I said, it got above the upper Bollinger Bands, above 80, and it did pullback, but it was just very slight, and then it went higher again, right? Uh, so, moving forward, where are we right now? Let's take a look. 
So you can see that yeah, a couple of days ago, we did touch that upper Bollinger Band, right? And it, it did go above 80, right? But it didn't, it didn't come back yet, right? Probably because it only just retraced. It just breathed in, so it's not going to breathe in that fast, right? It's still in the breathing out process. So I'm watching it really carefully. But I think in the next couple of days, right, if we hit that upper Bollinger Band again, right, uh, or if we're going to cross back down on the stochastics, right, we will see a potential another pullback. And again, we can't predict how deep the next pullback will be, but there'll be a great buying opportunity for investors to, again, you know, buy shares of companies that are great, but a bit overvalued right now. And of course, we can't predict, like I said, exactly where it's going to drop to, but you can see the 50 moving average has been a pretty strong support. So question is this, if you feel that the market's overextended and it's going to snap back really soon, how do you take advantage of that? How do you profit from that? Okay, so one way obviously is to sell short, right? You short sell the SPY, for example, but I don't like to sell short the stock market or the ETF. Why? Because when you sell short, you've got unlimited risk of loss. In other words, if it keeps going up, right, you can lose a lot of money, right? Because what if you're wrong? You must always think, what if you're wrong? Don't just think you're going to be right, okay? And the thing about short selling is that it's a you're risking a dollar to make a dollar. In other words, if it goes up, you lose a dollar. If it goes down, you make a dollar as you predicted. I don't like that, right? I like to risk a dollar to make two dollars or risk a dollar to make three dollars. Is what we call taking trades that are asymmetrical. In other words, you risk one to make a lot more than one. So you don't have to be right all the time. So one way to do that is obviously by using options. Options allow you to uh, use less risk, less capital, and increase your rate of return and your win rates overall. So how would I use options to profit from a potential pullback? Again, I'm not saying I'm going to do it now. I'm still watching it. I'm probably going to watch for a red, another red candle, like a bearish engulfing candle before I, I do that, right? But let's just imagine right now that I anticipate the market is going to pull back. What would I do, right? So let me just prepare you so when it happens, you, you know what to do, all right? So what I'll do is I'll probably buy a put option on the SPY at the current price. We call that at the money. And right now it's trading at 392. So I could buy a put option uh, at 390 strike price. Okay, 390 strike price. Let me write it down. 390 strike price. So what does buying a put option mean? So when you buy a put option, what it means is that the lower it goes, the more money you make. Because by buying a put option, you have the right to sell the SPY at 390. But the problem with buying a put option by itself is it's expensive to buy a put option, okay? So to reduce the cost, I sell another put option at my target price. So if I think that it's gonna drop to the 50 moving average, that will be about 376, then what I'll do is I will sell a put option at 376. So again, I'm gonna buy a put option at 390 and sell a put option at 376. So why do I sell a put option? When you sell an option, you collect premium, you collect money, right? So I'm gonna collect money from this and use this money to pay for my put option. So that lowers the cost of the trade, increases my rate of return. What does it look like? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna to go to my trade tab over here. And a common question I get would be, at what expiry date do I use? Which uh, date to expiration? Because I can choose many expiry dates. Well, it depends on how long I think it's gonna take for the price to drop from 390 to 376. So how long is it gonna take? Well, again, we can guess by looking at statistics. So from 390 to 376 is a 14 point drop, one four, right? So if you take a look at the right, you can see how long does it take for the market to drop 14 points. So you can see here, uh, there we are. Can you see this plus minus 14? So based on current implied volatility, the mathematics show that, that the market is going to drop 14 points or go up 14 points 
in 19 days. There we go, right? So we, we are going to use the 5th March expiry on this trade, okay? The 5th March expiry, because based on uh, this, it's going to drop 14 points from today. Or go up 14 points, but by we're betting it's going to go down 14 points, okay? So I'm going to open this up. Oops. Open up this column. And again, I'm going to buy the 390 put and sell the 376. So how does that work? So buy the 390, look for 390, 390, there we are, 390, click buy. Boom, buy, 390, sell 376. 376, hold down the control key, sell. There we are. So I'm buying the 390 put, selling the 376 put, how much does the trade cost me? It's going to cost me $2.51. Now, one contract of options is 100 shares. So always multiply by 100 shares, right? So to put on this trade, it's going to cost me $251. Now, that's my maximum risk. So if I'm wrong and the market keeps going up, the most I can lose is $251. So the great thing about options is you don't have to put a stop loss and you've got limited risk your risk is limited from the beginning. Now, if I'm right and the market does drop to 376, how much money do I make, right? Let me just show you, boom. So you can see over here, the maximum loss of the trade is 251, okay? And the maximum profit, if it drops, if I'm right, is 1149. So I'm risking $250 to make $1,149. Is that a good deal? That's not bad, right? So if you take 1149 divided by 251, you're risking, or I'm risking, $1 to make $4.50. As long as you risk one to make more than one, it's a good trade. In this case, if you risk one to make $4, that's an excellent trade. Now, let me show you the statistics behind, again, trading. So, for example, you could take 10 of these trades and do you have to be right on all 10 trades? No, you don't, right? So, let's imagine out of 10 trades, uh, you win on five trades. So, five winning trades and five losing trades. And, you know, your win rate is, say, only 50%, which really sucks. But let's imagine even if you suck, okay? And when you lose, how much do you lose? right? You lose, for example, $250 for this particular trade. So uh, 250 and you lose five of them, you lose uh, one, two, five, zero, right? But when you've got a winning trade, how much do you win? So in this particular case, you win uh, one, one, four, nine, for each winning trade, right? So 1149 times five will be equal to 5745. So 5745 minus 1250, you still make a profit of 4495. So you can be right half the time and still make great net profits at the end of the day. Now, what if you really suck at making guesses and your win rate is only 30%? So what if you're wrong seven out of 10 times? Guess what? You still make money. You are still a profitable trader. Let's check it out, right? So if you take 10 of these trades, for example, and again, you, you win only three of them and you lose seven of them, right? But each time you lose, you lose 250 or to be specific, 251 in this case, right? So 251 times 7, you lose 1757, all right? But each time you win, you're winning uh, 1149. 1149. So you're winning 3447. So this minus this, what's your net profit at the end of the day?
your not your net profit will be one thousand six hundred ninety dollars, even with a thirty percent win rate, which really sucks. So what I want you to take away from this is that to be a consistently profitable trader, it's not about predicting the future. No one can predict where the market will go a hundred percent. It's not about being right all the time. No. It's about managing your risk so when you're wrong, you only lose a dollar. And when you're right, you make a lot more than a dollar. You've got a great risk to reward ratio and asymmetrical trade. So if you keep taking these high probability, low risk, high return trades, even if you are right half the time or 30% of the time, you are still making consistent profits every single month every single year. That's how I do it. That's how my students do it. Now, the best part about it is that I will not even lose the $251 even if it's a losing trade because I can only lose this amount if I allow the options to expire worthless, which I will never do. I will always exit much earlier than the expiry date if it's not working in my favor, which means even if I'm wrong, I'll probably lose only about $125 or $150 in reality, which means I'm really risking a dollar to make something like $8. If you take a look at what the trade looks like, it looks like this. This is the profit and loss of the trade. So you can see currently right now, the SPY is right here, 393. And I am making a bet that it's gonna go down, right? So if it goes down, you can see, if it goes down, I'm making money, right? Making a couple of thousand dollars. If it goes up, market keeps going up, I lose money, but my risk is limited. My risk is limited to $250. But again, I will only lose $250 if it expires worthless. If I exit early at the purple line, I probably lose about $125, $130. And that's how you trade intelligently. By the way, those of you who watch my trade on GameStop, uh, just to let you know, I already closed the trade a couple of days ago for 59% profit in just less than a week, right? So uh, if you watch my earlier video, this was posted on the 3rd of February. Yep, so that was about 12 days ago. And I talked about GameStop and I said, hey, you know, GameStop um, was really manipulated by both parties, right? And I said it was unsustainable, it was overvalued, you gotta be an idiot to buy this damn stock it's gonna go down and sure enough, it went down. Again, it's not that I can predict the future, it's called common sense, dude, <laughs> right? But I said, I don't think it's gonna go below $20. So what I did was I sold a put option at a strike price of $20 and collected a really great premium because of the high volatility. And if you recall back on my video, uh, let's see where that was. Let me just fast forward, yep, that it is. So I sold, uh, there we are, yep, so that was my trade. So I sold this 20 strike put at $2.72, that was my average price. So again, when you sell a put, you want the price to go down, then you buy it back cheap and you make a profit, right? So I sold the put at $2.72 and it went down. Uh, all the way to about a dollar plus. So I, I closed my trade. Let me show you that trade over here. This is my live account. Let me go to trades, uh, GameStop, GME. Yeah, over there, right? So I bought it back for a dollar 10 cents. So I sold it for 272, bought it back a dollar 10 cents. So I made a profit uh, of about 59%. Very small trade, right? Just made about $487. Now this on three contracts. I have another uh, three more contracts that I sold earlier for another $400, right? So total I made about, for it, well, close to 900 bucks in 12 days with very, very low risk. Uh, so even though GameStop collapsed, right? You can still make money. So the beauty of options is that with options, uh, you don't have to be right all the time. And you can see that with options, even if the, the stock collapses, I'm still making money. Even if the market collapses, I'm still making money. You make money in any direction, right? With a lot of leeway. So with options, you're able to generate consistent income every month, every year, if you know what you're doing, right? You gotta know what you're doing 
And that's what I teach my students every day. In fact, these are my current open positions. Right, and you can see over here, uh, these are my options trades, right? I've got Walmart, I've got Zoom, I've got VIX. I just opened a VIX trade, uh, RUN, I've got Spotify, United Health, Fiverr, another VIX trade, Alibaba, Amazon, Facebook, and Lums Research, right? So you can see uh, these are all my unrealized profits right now, just hit about $700,000 US in unrealized profits. And over here is another trading account where you can see these are all my uh, option trades. By the way, this particular strategy, which I mentioned a couple of months back, has a 90% win rate on this particular strategy. And this is my bull put spread extreme strategy, which I mentioned a couple of months ago in one of the videos. Um, the other way to trade the market if you expect it to come down, is to go long on the VIX, the volatility index. So you can see I've got right a trade on the VIX right here. Right, These are all my VIX trades. And basically the VIX looks like this. There we go, that's the VIX, right? So you can see right now the VIX is at the support level. Okay, The VIX is the volatility index, which means when a market drops, the VIX goes up it moves opposite of the market. So there are two ways to do it. Either I buy put options on the SPY and or I buy call options, spread options on the VIX. So when the market drops, the VIX goes up, I make a profit as well. And like I said, over here, you can see I've got these trades over there. These are all my VIX trades that I have over there. Not profitable yet, right now just about break even. Well, down 45 bucks, right? Slightly below my break even. And over here you can see these are my VIX trades. Yeah, just minus $20. Another one, you know, minus about 400 bucks over here. So not yet profitable. When a market drops, these will become very, very profitable. Now, some people think that options is really complicated to learn and you know, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too dumb. Not true. Anyone can learn this, regardless of your age, if you have the right teacher. <laughs> and if you take a great course, of course, right? So these are some of my students. And like Tony Reese, I'm really proud of him because he's 72 years old. I ordered Adam's options course three months ago. He and Bam Bam, who is nicknamed for Bam Fam Van, who is my partner, absolutely love you sharing such common sense and research details in your trades. I will be forever grateful. You have given me the tools to change my life, right? I'm 72 and have more than doubled my account in eight months, something I only dreamed of. You see, I tried to trade on my own for a year back in the 1980s and took my 15 grand down to zero. I mean, this guy lost his entire account back in the 1980s, didn't give up, got up, moved on, learned options the right way, and now doubled his account in eight months. This is another question people have. Do I need a big account to trade options? Not necessarily. You can trade options with a $2,000, $3,000 account, which is relatively uh, an okay size, right? Uh, this is one of my students. This is my options trading account. It's a small account. I started with 2,000 in January, and I later added another 12K once he started making profits. Now it's up to $50,000. As you can see, um, he's made a net profit of $40,800 from his $12,000 account. So really multiplies the account, even if you start small, really works as well. This is not from Vietnam, one of my high rolling students, right? I'm Tony from Vietnam. Very glad to tell you that since the beginning of March, 2020, my account has increased 104%. I joined the UIP and options course since February, 2020 and applied what you taught to my investments, right? And this is Faith, all the way from Singapore. And Faith learned options initially when she took her, I think, CFA, Chartered Financial Accountant, or one of her diploma or degree courses. And she was a bit confused learning the theory, right? But then with our group of uh, peers helping her out, she said, um, fast forward to 2020, because of my group of friends, and these are all my students, by the way, right? And we encourage peer-to-peer -peer support. I'll probably still be sitting on the sidelines. It has supercharged my account and I managed to get over 200% return last year, all right? 
not only have I benefited tremendously from fantastic teachers like Adam Koo and Fam Bang Fam Van, the friendship I found is priceless. All right, and this is Olivia, another one of our students from Singapore, and she's able to, again, from someone who knew zero, absolutely zero about options a year ago, right now she's trading options and you know generating consistent profits every single month, right? And finally, one of my students over here, uh, hi, Bang and Adam, shared this earlier today. I've been trading for years, but I only knew single calls and puts. I was making a lot of money, then I lost almost all my profits, right? After that, I made more money, but then I lost profits again. I was just going around in circles. And that's what happens to most people when they don't have a trading system. When they make money, it's luck. And luck doesn't last forever. Whatever, whatever you make from luck, you're gonna lose it eventually when the luck runs out. So to be a consistently profitable trader, you can't depend on luck. You gotta use a trading system that makes money consistently even if you're not right all the time. After I joined Piranha Profits in 2020, studied so hard to master option strategies, now I can sleep through the night. Every day I'm so excited to trade and invest without any fear. This year alone, in one month, I'm up $35,000 US. Life is good, all right? So I keep telling people, right? The greatest investment you can ever make is invest in your education before you invest in anything else. So stay safe, may the markets be with you, and I'll see you in the next video. If you wanna catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you wanna check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're gonna learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.